Oh, oh, it's being recorded. <laughs> Were you ready? Am I on live? <laughs> Were you ready for part three? Yeah, I'm ready for part three. Okay. I, uh, I found last week uh, advice from a graphic designer of, to design students about what they should think about for their work. And um, she's giving this advice from the edge of her bed in her bedroom. <laughs> so it's sort of bedside bedside advice. But there's one one place in there where um, so let I share this screen here. And um, let's see. You see the ad will be coming bursting on here for oh no, that's the wrong one. Oop, that that's a good one too though. Uh oh it's the bedside graphic advice here. I'll show that one later. The other one. Your business item? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it? <laughs> One, two, three. Holy. A lot of ads. Okay, here we go. Story camping. I remember story books like X Military. Let's start. <laughs> I really liked art. I was like, what can I do that's related to art that will allow me to have a good income? My dad suggested graphic design and he told me a little bit about what it is and it was perfect. So what exactly is graphic design? When you're a graphic designer, you are a creative problem solver and your job is finding a creative solution for someone else's work. An example of graphic design out in the real world is like packaging, movie poster design, restaurant menus, graphics on the web, stuff like that. Basically everything that takes a lot of creative process and thought like everything in the world that was made by a graphic designer or an art director. So going over the questions about like, should I take graphic design? What exactly is it? I'm thinking about doing it. Meredith asks, how do you do your lettering and designing? I am going to go over that later, but the part I'm going to answer in this section right now is, would you recommend being a graphic designer? Honestly, that is totally up to you. You have to be the judge of that. If you're creative and you know art is your passion and you feel like you have an eye for design. I knew all of this ever since I was very small. Lots of people have different tastes, but you have to be true to yourself and know like if you really like it, then you should pursue it. Going to school, we saw a lot of people go into graphic design and then drop out. Do not take graphic design if you want to start your own t-shirt company. Over half of the people that went there were like, I want to start my own t-shirt company, then dropped out. It's so much more than just starting your own t-shirt company. You're going to be learning about type, you're going to be learning about layout. It's more intense than just learning about the programs and how to use it. It's learning about everything that goes I personally like doing it. Okay, I'm going to pause and I'm going to, uh, it's always interesting when I pause this. Uh, well, I watched it a couple of times. This is a good pause. Just thinking about uh, us, if you're going to do a video or something like that, you have no control over when people pause it. And so this, this is a pretty good spot, but I found another spot where she wouldn't have liked that. But let's see, I'm going to go up to, Seven, uh, I'm going to go up to here. Uh, maybe I'll go to 5.55, restart. You're going to graphic design. Be prepared to have some thick skin or grow some thick skin because it will be hard at first to like hear all these critiques. It'll make things a lot easier and you'll grow so much more as a designer. So now we're going to talk about like building skills and motivation in graphic design. Lauren asks, what are the best resources for aspiring graphic designers? Inspiration, like websites like Behance, The Guidelines, The Guidelines was started by one of the alumni at my school that I went to like. Now it's like one of the biggest, is it the biggest? I think it's the biggest package design website. And yeah, that's a great site for package design inspiration. Also just for inspiration. And also Dribble when reading. <laughs> find what inspires you and then find the supplies in order to do the things that inspire you. Next we'll be talking about internships. 
Claudia Janet asks, tips on when is a good time to apply for internships and tips on getting an internship. What works for you? I'd say the best time to get an internship is when you're in school, maybe like midway to like towards the end is a good time to get an internship. So in order to get an internship, you need a portfolio. Don't stress out about this way too much while you're in school. Don't worry about it till like midway through school. Portfolio. Like the fundamental projects that you do are most likely not going to end up as portfolio pieces. But keep your portfolio in mind as you're doing projects because you never know later on what can turn into a portfolio they know that you don't have any experience. So as long as you have good school projects that show your design style and what you can do, that's what matters. It's also very good motivation to keep doing well in school. Also, in order to get an internship meet a resume, put together a nice one. It doesn't have to be like superly over designed. Even to get my job that I have right now, I didn't have a crazy resume. I just had like a nicely designed resume that was taken into the eye. And that's all you need, I think. Also going back to like why I really suggest getting an internship, they make you realize what type of company you would like to work for. Okay, a resume that's not a big deal, but pleasing to the eye was what she was saying. So oh, that was <laughs> bye. I'm gonna say goodbye to her now. She does go on and talk about a lot of things very specifically. Got a little bit of upspeak there and a little bit of a fry going on. But uh, those are your other things that I've been looking up is uh, upspeak and fry. <clears throat> there are so many videos about that that you uh, just go out and see about that so that if you have a tendency, like I sometimes do, <laughs> to upspeak and uh, fry a little bit, uh, you want to work on that so that it's not a problem. But as I was looking at this, I the part about the resume was that I was what I wanted you to hear that doesn't have to be a super big deal since we're going on to our resumes it just has to be nice looking and informative and I'm going to look show some resumes from some candidates from for the new art position but if you do um, do a video this I stopped and took screenshots of where she stopped and went a bit. So I thought, okay, let's look at this. This is sort of an okay place to stop. <laughs> but this one was <laughs> If this was the. I <laughs> Okay, I don't want to be in there. Are you having fun, Beth? <laughs> just they just go through and, and stop it in all these places and make a movie that just goes to those spots that you never want to show anyone. But this one I thought was kind of a wistful and, and uh, a little bit, you know, thinking. It's like when sometimes when the, the in the classroom when I'm working on the was working on the computer and somehow it reversed and put, shot a picture of me on the screen and I'd be all squinched up like that. <laughs> Not how I'd like to be seen. So yeah, so those are some um, some resumes and then the uh, uh, some resumes that we've done are some DM8 examples. See if I can find um this goes through some oh that's uh, that that's us um so this is an example from uh one of our last classes and this is an example that we've shown in in here so all three of her things so these are uh, resumes and single page going into like a CV that goes on for pages and pages. If you're an artist who's trying to get into a gallery or something like that, then I can see going on showing lots and lots of, of pages. But these are uh, applying the one of the logos that you decide on 
this week of, of your logos, deciding how it's going to look on the, your resume. And um, so this is uh, one we looked at last week, and none of the things that she proposed doing for uh, project two came through for her final project. So I think I mentioned last week that uh, she ended up cutting these pieces out, the AAH pieces, uh, and applying them to the, the physical outside of her portfolio. So that was, uh, and then let's see if, um, I don't think I can't find her resume here, but let's go and look at this is a resume that we're going to look at a revision of. So last semester, I think this is from last semester, we were having people do, if they were going to do a bleed to set their resume up with a bleed. But the whole world changed since last year, and the printers shut down. Uh, the printers aren't working right now. My printer in San Jose is. <laughs> but you can send it out, yeah. But I mean, the, print, so the local printers aren't working, so yeah. uh, the community printers are all at home. And so right now just making it look good in the pdf and we talked about that that was something that uh was worth considering and let me see if this is so this is the so this was a a, a thought for um how this page would look based on the kinds of things that were happening here. So uh, generally making things a little bit uh, softer on the left and aligned. So there isn't much of a change, but this is one where I did uh, suggestions for a kind of a before and after to make things readable in a different way. So that these things over here don't have to be as dark or as large and so it's kind of like what i was talking about with um, joel's page that his information and what he has to say should be the large prominent uh parts and this one was another thing when we talked about readability this would be more readable if it goes down just a tiny bit. Also, to align align the word profile with the profile. So, and align the education with the education. So, uh, not having it, it was a little, it gets a little confusing sometimes. I saw one resume where this was done uh, or no, it wasn't a resume, it was a program for a film festival. And people came to the wrong day because the the heading for the film festival for the um, that day of the festival came appeared to come after the information. So it was a, a and people actually went to the wrong day because it wasn't clear in the information it wasn't aligned quite right so people thought that the date went with the other piece of information so this clearly would go with what comes after it but you want to make that that very clear by uh, having it be directly connected to it so that and often these are read by some sort of i don't know uh, reader, <laughs> some kind of electronic reader, and anything you can do to make things hang together is is good. Um, also, keeping being consistent about headings, and so into, if you introduce a new heading, it's implying that 
that that piece is more important for some reason. But again, you'd want want that to be directly across from the the information. Then the dates and so forth, if you can soften those and just make them gray or smaller and gray, then they're there, but the things that stand out are what we did. And so that would be uh, something that you'd want to make clearer. Also, this is about a readability, about letting, so being able to get back to the beginning of the next line easily is a matter of type size and letting. So this one's a little dense, and you want to make your resume description profile as easy to read as possible. And uh, so that's the, the other thing to think about there. And then if you really want to emphasize something like this, then you'd have a way to do it. Because if you would go from big to bigger, or uh, sort of light to sort of lighter, you want to try to make the, uh, the differences clear. And you also want to spell out things like dur, 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 and rud. You want to spell it out to drive and road. So that would be something to be aware of. And uh, you would, for this part here that has um, you doing a hanging in there and tab in some places. You know, it looks like there um, might be an extra space in there. But uh, making this all easy to read, too. And so if, then if you have references, and I'm one of the references, you want to make sure that you have space around the references so that's really clear. Again, um, opening things up. So this would be a front and the back resume. And it's hard to get things all onto one page, but that's um, part of what we're working on. So this one is pretty pretty high density, and I would just maybe go down. Type is pretty easy to read at nine point. You know, we're used to reading it at nine point or ten point. And so if you've got it at 11 or 12 point, then you can go down to a little smaller. And I'm not sure about uh, the way in which an automatic reader reads something out, but whatever you do, you want to look at the qualifications, desirable qualifications that are listed in the job description and in pepper your whole resume with those words because the word matcher is going to go through and compare your resume to the job description. Now some people have, have a resume that they hand out for everything but if you're going for a specific job and I don't know Julie yours I, I have your resume in here somewhere so you can show uh, I have to look it up but uh, uh, that got you the job, or really helped get you the job. And did you go and look up the, the qualifications and the the what was included in the job and put that deliberately put that in your resume? Um, you know, what was interesting is so I got signed with Creative Circle, uh, which is an agency for creatives, and essentially. You have to get hired twice. So you submit your um, like your portfolio to them and then they if they like you they'll pull they'll pull you in. Um, sometimes they give you feedback on your portfolio and have you tweak a couple things. Uh, if your portfolio doesn't meet their standards, they just kind of pass on you. And then once you're in, they send you jobs uh, and then to each position you have to respond by saying I have 
these four qualifications and it's kind of cool because then you don't have to write a cover letter you just have to write four bullet points in your email you send it back to them with your resume and then um, so they're, they're connected but it's not embedded within your resume it's usually stuff that's on your resume though um, so that was that's kind of the way that went it was which was weird <laughs> So you could uh, sort of, if you were going out on your own, you would use that method yourself. In the, yeah, you yeah. Look at, look at the what the uh, job required and wanted, and write those down and deliberately include them. So, because sometimes you have a, a reader that will just uh, that's not a human. So we'll look for the words in both things, and if it matches, then you get an, uh, you know, you'll get. It's definitely easier if you can get in with like Creative Circle or whatnot because they they really help you to avoid that system. And they get a lot of jobs that don't post on Indeed or whatever. Um, you know, one of those giant hubs where everybody applies for the same job. Mm -hmm. uh, so like if you can it it really saved me a bunch of time and I actually ended up applying for some of the jobs through them and on my own because they were posted twice and I'd always get responses through the agency but not through myself and I was yeah. applying with the same resume so yeah oh. <laughs> so they're listening to the agency they expect the agency to filter yeah down so that they don't have to do that work of, of assessing each yeah and, uh, it's kind of cool with some of the agencies too because you can you don't have to have a job they do like one-off freelance projects too so you can build your portfolio that way yeah. so you um you submitted your portfolio to them first like that's how yeah you yeah there's like a open posting for like designers but you can usually just go to creative circle or uh, there's another one. You mentioned another. It sounds the the same. I think it's like the creative group or something. Yeah. And you can usually post your portfolio there a number of times until someone writes back to you, um, and then they then they interview you, and then they kind of start looking for things that might suit you. Cool. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really it, is helpful to know that it's not just kind of a when you're looking at a general uh, inf general information about creative portfolios they can only they can only be general they don't know about our area or how yeah those kinds of agencies work and and what it is so that you can kind of cut out some of the the general stuff and get right to the point so uh, um, for this one, though, it's kind of getting a format. Let me just see if I have. So this is Marco's, and it's a strong one. Uh, this is his, this was his mark that he decided on, and he was uh, he, he hadn't done much work, but he has format here, and now he is getting work because he went on to CSUMD in, in design and when you go to CSUMD you have a whole capstone some uh, year where you work for a company and uh, actually have a job working for somebody in, in the area doing graphic design and um, so that's one of the places and we did that one. Um, and that one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah. I think that that's it for those. But I did want to show you how now these get kind of, these are not necessarily for art, but these are for teaching. So some of these I selected because it is really hard to, uh, I mean, this is a link, but you don't have to have these big dark lines under the link. So you, uh, you, the link will usually be active 
Um, or if you have to have a line under them, control that line so it's a half point line or a, a very tiny line so it doesn't blast your whole page with uh, this. And this is for photography, so they're not really looking for a design instructor, but part of what they're looking for is, is has to do with design. So these resumes do tend to um, um, the make an impression. So here's condensed type that's hard to read Beth, early, and uh, the line length is really long. Back and on that last page, we are talking about the lines underneath. Yeah. I, you can also grayscale them or make them like a very fine dotted line grayscale so that they're kind yeah. of there, but they don't really, you know. Yeah. But in fact, you don't actually need a line at all. No, you don't. Yeah. Like if you were yeah. online, if you were on the web page, you, you also would have options like graying out the line, making it a fine yeah. dotted line, things that this don't. A, yeah. It's a anyway. PDF, so these are all, all active. Yeah, so you can uh, do that with the PDF so that, that, that there's some kind of line there, but it doesn't stand out. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. So that's the idea is to make it look um, pleasing because those are threatening to me. They look, <laughs> they look like, ah. <laughs> and, and this one is, is very nice looking overall, but the, the, it's a letter and it's practically unreadable. So one of the first things that Eileen Strasser's talked about is the, don't use narrow type because it's going to save you space so that you can write more words in a longer line that then has to have less letting because that makes it um, really hard to read. And, uh, and you, if, especially in, if you're in a field of, as we had 79 applicants, so we five of us who were on the committee had to read 79 of these resumes, cover letters, and uh, uh, Rate them. <laughs> and when I when I look at that without even reading the type, just looking at the page from this level, that first paragraph doesn't look inviting. It looks like a wall of type. Like that's yeah. really one single yeah. thought. That's really one paragraph. Maybe yeah. it's really three paragraphs would be my guess, but I can't tell until I actually start to read it. Oh, but it's really inviting for me to read. Yeah. Well, uh, it's exhausting before you even start reading it. And then it's impossible as you're reading it to find your way with a long link, line length, narrow type, small type, hard to get back to the beginning of the next line. All really good uh, things to take note of. And uh, and also this the actual semantic meaning of paragraphs and content. I mean, it it doesn't. You know, I, I, I'd have to read it, but I can't understand how that could simply be one paragraph. It's not one coherent thought, I'm sure. It's yeah. not, unless it's James Joyce or something, it's just, that doesn't say, <laughs> that, that's not a paragraph. So, I mean, it's not even, I mean, beyond the graphics, which is kind of intimidating, yeah. just the content-wise, if you're not even evaluating the graphics, it's like, wow, the writing style is dense. That would put me off before even the graphic design yeah, flaws or, or things you could improve on. See what I'm saying? So yeah, it's not just, it's the content matters too and how you write is that, mm -hmm. that's indicative. Well, especially if you're the, going to be the only full-time person in a department who gets all of the, you're going to have to write all kinds of stuff if you're uh, like a program chair or department chair or and that's where the full-timer usually goes. And so uh, writing is going to be another piece of it. So, uh, and this one is quite nice and easy to read. Uh, and so that, and this involves uh, using, using tabs and using indents and that sort of thing. So whether you're using Word or using InDesign, uh, Illustrator is not the place to try to do type. I would go for Word before I got involved with, they, you can 
tabs and things like that in, in Illustrator, but uh, InDesign would be the place to, to go for that. So this this is uh, being a CD is holding together. Here's a, uh, and this one's uh, pretty straightforward, but I think that it goes on to like that. So this would be for all your exhibitions and all of your uh, other stuff. So for our resumes, we're going to be looking at a one-page resume and trying to keep it uh, contained. And um, so we have um, we have a few examples. I'm just going to get rid of these tags here. Yes. Are yeah. any of these on Canvas to look at for our ideas and what works and what doesn't? Where I'm going right now yeah. is to see how many I put up there. <laughs> I I didn't put any of the um, the art photography people up. I just wanted you to kind of see those as a general look. So. So I have, a, the, I have a resume template here that's an InDesign file that you can open up in um, so you, Let me just get it out here. So it's an InDesign file that you would take out here and then So it's just kind of a, it's a format that where you would replace all of those things in there and uh, have more or fewer, but you'd see how it's constructed. So the, the type is not, it's just a formatting and you can change the headings that are off to the side and change the, what they say, uh, just replace all of those things. And this gives you a page to work with that that you can replace things to that um, so you have things in here like the uh, cataclysmic design avoidance award and less is more award of excellence and the four-day design marathon and the design smackdown prize you have all of those things that you <laughs> may have been involved with but so these are all oh yeah and i'm really humble too these are just words that you replace, obviously. And uh, so that's, uh, that's for that. And uh, let's see. So I'm going to uh, just close that one. Let's give you another look. So that's, that's just a template that you're going to use that you can use. If you have another one that you want to use, then you can do that. So, uh, but that's uh, what's in here for you to take and uh, use as a basis for your content. And this is, um, mm, one we saw here, and this is the resume and the cover letter with the logo. Um, change your mind between week two and week three. That's just it, or the yeah, so that she got her logo in, but she didn't use any of the logos that she. Um, had in turned it had turned in for the logo. Hey, don't do that anymore. Okay. And I think that this is just the cover letter. So we saw what she was doing with the oh the her logo and stuff like that. So that is. Next. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> um, so, cover letter and um, I showed her uh, resume earlier. If you need to put your resume in there, back in here, that would be. So a one page resume incorporating your your identity and with content that so the uh, the one that I provided the template could be turned into something like this, depending on how you set up the page and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, just keeping it simple is what you want to do. And then um, Marco's. So he had his his logo two ways, <laughs> and so he decided to use one of them on his cover letter and one of them on his resume. So that that is a part of the assignment, and I think that might be it. Yeah, and um, also in our modules here, in terms of um, typography. We have um, we have these resources that uh, some of you who are in um, EMT have seen, but you really can't have quite enough of. Eileen Strizzler, you know, she really knows what she's talking about. And I'm going to get this in here so that we don't have to stop, watch the animated. And I don't think I can open up that that much anymore. But um, it really is important to have like go to kind of foremost authorities on I'm uh, just going to stop here because I want everybody to see this. Type rules. What does type rule? It's a whole book about lines, really? <laughs> It's just about rules, horizontal rules or vertical rules. I can't hear you. I don't know. Beth, I think you muted yourself. You want me to unmute you? Yeah, she muted herself. I didn't mean to mute myself. Sorry. I clicked on something, but there. So there we go. Type rules. It's a big book, but you don't have to go out to buy it. You just have to read what I put in here, especially for you guys to have so that you'll know at least about this one part of this one uh, chapter. Since we've been talking about legibility and readability, size of type, uh, uh, width of type, serif, non serif, bold, uh, different type weights, all of those kinds of things, what's easier to read. Um, I wanted you to at least have this chapter so that you're aware of what, what really is a kind of a, we don't, we ha don't have that much of this at Cabrillo. We have Carl's graphic design class in the DM2 and the DM6 class where we kind of pound on this some, and then this class where we really 
pound on it even more because it's you putting yourself out there represented by the typography you do and um sometimes that can make or break uh what you're trying to reach so you want to be able to get where you mean to go so that we have line spacing line length color or contrast um, and legibility so if it's hard to read it's hard to read and so sometimes you have to walk away from something for a couple of hours and come back and look at it and see is this really hard to read and so that um, you have a really good sense of what's going on there. Similar double spacing between sentences. I didn't look up these related articles, but I did uh, get another article that's important because it's about, so I'm going to go back. I think I'm going back here. So, um, Um, so this is the other one that's important because very often you'll be submitting, you may be submitting your resume online, but this is an article by Nick Babbage, a name to remember and a name to go look up because he developed a lot of methods and uh, tutorials and information about uh, about getting your type to look good online so and this is a really good kind of summary of that information uh, yes also and this is the one i think that uh, in the class yesterday uh, or whenever it was a couple of days ago what's the um which of the design principles of tarp is most prominent in this image proximity what's the first letter in cart <laughs> Contrast. <laughs> what is contrast? Yes. yes. So, what's the first thing that happens when you look at this page? It's contrast, and it's contrast in two ways: the big purple square that didn't blast out at you at the beginning, took a couple of seconds to do that, and then the typo that that super strong. So, contrast does make a difference. So what I was doing with um, Joel's uh, project one by making the contrast of his name and the, the thing that he said on that page stand out more than the other stuff like the question and the uh, just in general stand out. So getting getting typography right in digital design is is a crossover between what we do in print and you can see up here all of this is going on this could be a printed page it's not uh, something that is just reserved for print so this is uh, setting chunks apart from each other that have special meaning and this this link here we talked about the underline and that underline was a subtle gray underline but this is a secondary piece of information that's been around for you know 14 years and it's old old new news <laughs> so the people who are really good at web design knew this back in 2006 they knew that web design is 95% typography and they paid attention to it. So that first paragraph, the heading speaks loudest, the second paragraph or the first paragraph speaks loudly, the first 
paragraph of writing typing is not indented because it doesn't need to be because we want to start it right at the realignment and then we have a, a quote that's clearly set apart from the rest and then this heading is closer to the type it goes with and not the type above it that it doesn't go with so that's proximity so we've got proximity contrast and alignment uh going already and what are we missing nothing <laughs> repetition so with things that are alike should look alike in repetition so that the headings should be the same. They shouldn't change from heading to heading. And so this is um, <clears throat> too few fonts, resolution too low, um, all of these things. Too few fonts, huh? Yeah. The main usually whiny argument against typographical discipline online is that there are only few fonts available. Only, uh, the second argument is the screen resolution is too low, which makes it hard to read pixelated and anti-alias fonts in the first place. So uh, do not have enough set. Then we've got this. Uh, well, you know, you know that article that the where it says the argument that there are not enough fonts for the web. I mean, that that was true a while ago, but now the technology and the standards of the yeah. web have changed so that you have freedom to use any font you so wish. This is, this is 2006. But this right. Article Things have changed. Yeah, and, and that was true in 2006. That was true in 2006. But yeah. type was being set like this online in 2006. And um, because the people who were setting the type online came from print. I mean, the, uh, the people who had come from, who had not done any print before they, they came to, let's see. And web design is still primarily a, a visual medium. So visual graphic design principles like CARP apply to the web just as they apply to any, yeah. visual, any visual, primarily visual yeah. medium. And so we're back. And this is 2017, 2017 that this is written. And so uh, now th this part right here, I, for print, I would put this closer to this, unless this yeah. is a um, kind of a call out, like a side piece, that <laughs> something that you want to see independently it's kind of like a pull quote, yeah. <laughs> a little like a pull quote, yeah. So I um, just want to mention it's 528. So um, okay. we're, we're well, approaching the... Uh, okay, well, this is... I, I need, I'm going to go a little faster here because we do get to where we think about alignment on a small screen. And it's, some are good, some are not good. Uh, and these are things that I want you to know about, which is why I put this here. So this is like homework. <laughs> this is like something you uh, uh, want to reference. And then if you have things that are, that are also good references, then please bring those to the party because these things are coming out at a regular rate or untitled. So um, those are some links in there that uh, may or may not work. This is contrast right here, making sure that you your images have high enough high enough contrast to be read online if you're going to if your work is going to be viewed online. So this is about digital typesetting. And the first person he quotes here a ways down is um, um, not, that's Oliver. He does talk about Eileen Strisfer in here too. So that is, um, those are 
both in week three, I think. Okay, so you have your examples, um, resume examples, and you have a, oh, a template, a working template that you can use if you want to, or base yours on another uh, kind of template. But the, the type template you have in there, going back to, uh, time for us to go in now. Um, so, right, um, and we have a discussion too. So, uh, if you want to. Uh, talk about this kind of stuff in the discussion, and um, that one's not necessary for now. So I think that that's, that's good, and then you would be following your, applying your branding to um, use your styles to set up a resume and cover letter. So this is what you're doing with this one. And then with uh, useful resume tips. Uh, right here. And yeah. so that's uh, there are probably more new ones. I mean, this is the year old, but um, I think these guys actually bought the creative group. Yeah. Okay. So that was um, that's a reliable source then. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. So that I think that you've got enough to go on for that and. It's a one page cover letter and you want to make sure that you spell check everything. I've been getting some things, uh, not uh, so much in this class, but the, yeah, in other classes that are not spell checked. So just remember to do that, make a little note to yourself. And I think I, I hope we're getting, do, are there any last questions, anything that you think of that we may be able to answer? Kind of a lot of information. <laughs> and uh, kind of think about where you want to go. Uh, look up a, a job maybe that you would like to try out for and, and just write it, write the Resume, resume towards that job, possibly, or cover letter, make it more realistic. And um, Julie, I don't know where your cover or your resume is in here. Uh, you can just go to graphicjewels.net and it should be on there. Okay. But then I can't uh -huh. cheat and just use the same one. Graphic, oh, graphicjewels.net. Nice domain name. Yeah. That's for my business. <laughs> business. And are you using that for your email too? Uh, no, it's uh, graphicjewelsatme.com because I got mm. that short window when Mac owned me.com. Graphic Jewels, J U L E S? Yep. Correct. Yeah. But you, but you could be Jules at graphicjules.net. That's true. <laughs> but I couldn't figure out how to set it up. <laughs> you could be me at graphicjules.net. Okay. Right. Okay, well, if there's no further questions, I think we'll wrap this up and I'll stop the recording and I'll get I moving on. I want to just show graphicjules.net. Oh, okay. Let's, let's do that and then we'll. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that. Let's see if I can can get uh, 
The internet doesn't want the internet. Yeah, it doesn't want anything. So. But my resume is two pages, sorry. <laughs> You there? Okay. And I think it's under about on the top there. Somebody have a radio on? Uh, it's my wife's watching the news. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. She's torturing me with the president in the background. <laughs> oh dear. Oof. I I can't I can't I can't hear him or see him anymore. And <laughs> That's what I say too. Denial. Yeah. So there you go. So that's a nice. Uh, and this got you the job, right? It did. Uh, I also got this template from an uh, someone at a. I don't know what they're called. When I got laid off, they gave us like someone to help us get a job and uh -huh. templates. So I was able to utilize that, which is a time. Yeah. Some kind of coach or something. Yeah. 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 Resume coach or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to be our own each other's coaches. <laughs> yeah. It makes them feel better about right. laying people off. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Consolation <laughs> prize. Our grand finale. And so we can now we can say goodbye to each other until okay. we talk during the week <laughs> before next week. Okay, folks, you know what to do. I'll have these video files up sometime late tonight or early tomorrow morning, depending on how long it takes to process them and upload them. So, thank you. Cool, cool. thanks, guys. And remember that that the, the meet the uh, Zooms. Uh, meetings are set up as a recurring meeting, which means you just use the same link each week. You don't have to use the different okay. ones. You can use the same link each week, and um, and the videos are all posted in the same place each week, so you've got those already. I've got hey. mine hidden over here. The number's not showing anymore, John. What's not showing? No. That, I mean, the, the Zoom uh, number isn't showing. Zoom number. I, yeah, you said I had my little Zoom thing out on the right there, but I, I, oh, this one right here, remember this? Can you do this? Oh, uh, yeah, this? look at that. Just click DM8. Like you talk oh, that's the Vitea survey that doesn't make sense, yes. But that's money. The, uh, the Each student is counted, and even though we aren't many, the, the little mini that we are, <laughs> I want to make sure that you get your, get that check in there so that you know that, they know that we exist. Yeah. So, yeah. And you have to do that before the end of the month. So, um. Yeah. So, I was going to have you do it at the break, but. Yeah. Well, we can do that next yeah, week no. if they haven't done it for people next week. Okay. Yeah, okay, you folks. That, tell me so I can give you the three points. Yes, and and stay well, uh, and, and stay distance, however that works for you, and be healthy, and um, and we will see you later. Be productive. Thanks, guys.